two adults, two children. Bus, nursery, sky ride both ways, and a map of the park. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. wanted another giraffe or another uh, rhinoceros, they could simply go to the wild. They could buy the animal from an animal dealer who obtained it from the wild. Now that's no longer the case. In the last year, just the last year, half the rhinoceroses on the planet have disappeared. They're disappearing entirely. If they're going to persist, something is going to have to be done. Zoos, for some of these species, may be able to play a role, a small role in preserving some species so that they can be reintroduced to habitats in the future. The Chevalsky horse behind me here is an example. This is a species that's extinct in the wild. If the species is going to persist on our planet, uh, we're going to have to breed it successfully because all the Chevalsky horses in the world come from only 13 animals that came from the wild. We have to be very careful about the breeding of these animals so that we don't get them unnecessarily inbred and so that we avoid genetic diseases and factors like this. And this is true for many other species besides the Chevalsky horse. New arrivals are a major event at the zoo for the animals and people. This is the first day for these Chinese bears to be on exhibit. Now, as you can see, they're very anxious to make their debut here at the San Diego Zoo. They've been in quarantine for the past month. So you kids get out there and knock them dead, okay? It's taken about four years to get these bears here. Anytime you have a cub or a new bear is going to exhibit. It is very exciting. And whether they're new arrivals from afar or long-standing favorites, all bears are expert crowd pleasers. exhibits to best mimic the natural setting of the animal, to take into consideration the reproductive needs of the animal, the dietary needs of the animal. So now, instead of the old cement and wire, we look at cement, wire, and everything else. And everything else is, is, the, is the, the trick. The philosophy is trying to balance the need of the public, the viewing public, with the need of the animal. There's a lot of times I go through the zoo and a week will go by and I, I think to myself, you know, I haven't even noticed any animals around me because I don't pay attention to the animals as much.
Just as spectacular and exotic as the zoo's animals are its more than 7,000 species of plants collected from around the world since the zoo's earliest days. During the 30s, uh, Dr. Harry made, I think, three trips around the world and then a complete trip of South America. And he collected seeds on all of these trips and came back and uh, brought them back to the zoo. A lot of these things wouldn't grow. Some of them didn't, but a lot of them did. So that's why we have uh, the start of the botanical collection that's in the zoo. is a rock outcropping is from the uh, grass area of you know, Central Africa. So there are certain animals that live in that type of environment. We've taken the same type of plant life that would be in that uh, in the copy and adapted to this exhibit here. Like the African coffee, more and more zoo exhibits in the future will combine plants, mammals, birds, and reptiles in complete environments that replicate their native habitats. My closest attachments has been with some of the gorillas and some of the orangs some time back. Alvila, the, the female that's over there now, I gave her her first bottle back in the 60s when she was born. After she was born, I went over the children's zoo that night and they had a little, little bit of liquid that wanted me to get down her. And uh, if you start to go to sleep, I'd pinch her foot just a little bit. She'd wake up and take a couple of drinks and go to sleep, and I'd work through the night that way. And by the time the children's zoo person come in the next morning, she'd take the fluid. Well, I kind of feel close to Alvila. You know. First one I saw when I started working here was his mother, and she was two. I've waited 20 years for this. I think he's pretty good. feel like a mom. <laughs> you know, you're here every day, of, you know, five days a week for how many years, a number of years, and you, you can't help but take care and wonder how they're doing, if they're doing well. And that attachment, that, that fondness that you have for your animals your, in your care can't help but make you have that maternal feeling, whether you're male or female. East Asian Langer building, which is where we exhibit our langers during the day. At night, which is what I do, a late lockup is uh, bring the animals in and have them eat their dinner, make sure they're okay, and lock them up, which is upstairs. And uh, in the morning, if the other keeper comes in and lets them out during the day into the uh, exhibit where the people can also observe them.
Hi, Gordon. 